All right. So, yes, I'm Taya Murphy. Um, I'm doing this because I responded to a let's do a talk. <laughs> so can someone do a talk? So basically, um, yeah, open source video editing is what I decided to do it on. Uh, basically, I've chosen a few, like the, these four, four ones to go through. Uh, it's going to be a more generic talk about them than a how to use type thing, um, just because uh, yeah, to learn how to use them is probably going to be uh, like hours and hours worth of video and reading up and what have you. But hopefully I'll give enough of an overview to get an idea of what, what's available and uh, how easy they are to use, um, what sort of hardware they, they work on and stuff like that. Uh, so the the four the like the four main ones of open source video editors that I'm aware of anyway uh, are the four up there. So OpenShot uh, version two. Uh, this one there was a version one up until this year that was very basic, um, and I believe the guy who was the lead developer wasn't doing anything with it for about five or six years up until about the last 18 months where he started on the second version. Second version uh, yeah, is a lot more usable and functional than the first version was. Uh, KDEN Live, uh, another one that's been on and off with development over the last uh, probably 10 or 15 years with varying degrees of workingness, if that's a word. Um, the the last few years, uh, ironically, as OpenShot became developed again, the guys, uh, from what I gather, the guys developing KDEN Live got keen again and started redeveloping and fixing up problems. Uh, Lightworks is actually almost a commercial product um, in as much as there is a paid version um, which, uh, yeah, uh, I think they've got a license fee, which is a few hundred dollars a, a year for it. Then they've got the the free version, and the only difference between the free version and the license version is exporting your video and the amount of different ways you can export it. So you can render it to all the different formats in the paid version and uh, pretty much just YouTube and I think one other for for um, for the free version, but you can do all the the editing you want in that. Blender uh, Blender three D is mostly known as a three D rendering program, but it actually does have a video editing option, which very few people know about. Um, I didn't know about till about three months ago when I randomly came across it and went, "Hang on, you can edit in this." Wow. Right, so <laughs> that was that that side of things. So that's all of them. I um, guess the first thing to go through with the uh, with those um, is system requirements. Uh, a lot of uh, there, there seems to be a lot of difference online. Uh, OpenShot two doesn't have anything to tell you what the system requirements are, and I think that's just because it's only really been out of beta in, for about three months, and they're just there's not a lot of documentation yet. Uh, KDEN Live and Blender mention quite light uh, system requirements. Lightworks is the only one that sort of beefs it up. The reality is all four of them could be used on a very basic old, uh, probably Pentium 4 machine, as long as you don't actually want to open a video on it. Um, that's Effectively, the, it, it's the size of the videos that actually make uh, the computer work harder in these programs, if that makes sense. Um, that if you're working on flash video, which is a very low format and very low quality and small file, you could probably get away with a with a Pentium Pentium Four, or, uh, one of the old uh, dual core computers. If you're working on uh, 1080i or 1080p um, 
video and a two hour video, you, you'd want to be a lot closer to the i7 and and four meg or four meg four gigabytes of RAM. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess one thing I found, as I say, I guess I found with this with the such a range of what the minimum requirements were is I think that especially for the Blender and KDN Live is that they've gone, okay, what do we need to open up the program? Great, that's the minimum. <laughs> and then forgotten that once you've opened the program, you probably want to dump uh, <laughs> possibly very large files into the program, like gigabytes worth of files. So one thing I was going to mention at the start, which, I haven't, which is if you've got any questions anytime, happy with questions, I'll do a questions thing at the end as well. Cool. All right. The ease of use and and documentation. Um, with all the programs, if you want to use all the features, they're quite they're at least intermediate to advanced use. Um, where I'd say is if you just want to dump a, a video into the file into the into the program, any one of the programs, and just cut it and paste it back together they're usually fairly fairly easy to use for that um, but uh, i guess with any video editing if you want to do picture in picture and green screens and uh, layered videos they tend to be a bit bit harder to learn how to use um, or, or not harder to use but harder to find those functions uh, I'd say the, the hardest one to use was Blender. Um, for this talk, I went into the video editing for that last week and it did my head in. I just, I'm, having used Kden Live a lot, I still just went, I don't know where to find everything or anything in, in Blender. Having said that, there was a lot of online documentation that pointed me to videos that were in depth, but also were, um, weren't short. So I think if I wanted the time, wanted to spend the time going through a few hours, possibly 10 to 20 hours worth of videos, um, I think Blender can do a lot once you learn how to do a lot in it. I felt uh, Lightworks was a bit the same. A lo lot of good uh, tutorials, online documentation, but yeah, probably about 10 hours to use a lot to get your head around it all. The only one that I had a problem with was the just finding stuff for OpenShot 2. Again, I think that's just because it's only come out of beta in the last few months. So I think they're still working on getting all that together. The last thing on this was just, I, I guess, the OSs that it all work, like what operating systems they all work in. Um, <laughs> The only one that doesn't work across Linux, Mac, and Windows <laughs> is KDN Live. It's really only for Linux, but because Mac OS is on Linux, is sort of based on Linux, you can effectively shoehorn it into to work on 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 OS X. But uh, yeah, you're better off going to OpenShot 2 and or any of the others and just installing it really um so yeah that was that side of things cool i feel like i'm rushing through it but if you're happy i'm happy <laughs> cool all right some of the stuff that they can do um effectively the i guess the main reason for well the main two reasons for wanting to use a video editor is just to I guess staple to two or three videos together um, and just hit go and put them together or doing stuff where you you're using transitions or putting effects on it so um, look all four programs have an, a range of effects and transitions that they do they'll all read pretty much every file format or video file format and put out to almost every file format. Um, where I, I guess rendering out to the file formats 
they all do about 80% of the file formats, just not all the same 80%. So it's one of those things that if you have a specific file format you want to get the file out to, you may want to look at which one does that and go for that file, that video format. But um, again, they are all, all four programs seem to be seem to have caught up um, to doing doing a lot of effects, doing a lot of transitions. So um, yeah, if you're into that sort of thing, they'll do it. Um, file formats, getting out to the file formats, uh, they all sort of, I guess, have different ways of presenting it, but effectively, like the picture on the left, you, you get to say, say, tell the program what file format you want to save the, the finished product to and dump it out to that. Again, a lot of that depends on what you actually want to do with it or who you want to give the file to. If you want to put it onto a DVD, it's one file format. If you want to give it to YouTube, it probably doesn't matter because they re-render it a lot of the time when you upload it anyway. So, yeah, that's that side of things. Um, all right, any questions? Not yet? Cool. I'm okay with, with yes and no on that. Um, yeah. So you've got to work out exactly what format your video's in before you put it in, it's oh, detected. No, uh, so yeah, no, look, uh, you don't have to work out what file format your video is in to import it. They'll all just recognize it, auto recognize it. Okay. Um, definitely uh, with um, uh, Kden Live, uh, I know it sort of pops up with a message saying, your default file format isn't the one that you've imported, that it auto selects when you install the program. Do you want to go ahead in this other file format? Um, I don't really know why they'd bother doing that because the reality is if that's the video you want to edit, that it, it's in the file format it, it's in, so there's, it's pointless changing it to another file format just to edit. Yeah. Wouldn't that imply that uh, if you've got a particular file format that you're reading in, that <coughs> if you set the output to be that same type of file, it would be less work for the for the application, and also that would mean that, that you'd be less loss of quality as it tries to convert um, from one format to the other. Not uh, the loss of quality is more. Uh, so I basically. Yeah. In two sections, the, it's no more or less work. It's just the quality is that you're putting out to is firstly based on the quality of the file format that comes in. So if you've got the old uh, uh, flash quality, which was really low res, bad quality, and then you're trying to put it out on 1080p, you, you've still got you know, 300 by 200 quality <laughs> coming out just in a, with a lot of, a, a huge file format or huge file size with only about 5% of the file size actually needed. Does that yeah, make sense? I was thinking more along the lines of, say, for instance, you had uh, an MP2, MPEG-2 file that was in there and you had a 720p and you're, that's what you read in as your input and you're putting out uh, 720p file of MPEG-4, and it would have to take that MPEG-2, render it to bitmap effectively, yeah. and then convert that back to MPEG-4. Whereas if it was going from MPEG-2 and your final output was also MPEG-2, it could, other than <coughs> stitching this bit of video to that bit, it could just copy them. Yeah, I, my understanding is it kind of ignored like all the programs kind of ignore that ability that yes, the reality is it's the same file format. So therefore it should just go, uh, all I need to do is copy from here to there, then from there to there. But the 
Uh, but the programs don't do that. They tend to turn around and go, okay, well, I'm going to render every frame as I normally do. Um, so, yeah, I, I guess if they wanted to save time, definitely they could. But I think they assume that it's a different file format, so therefore render it fully. Yes. Well, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I thought Julio was, was actually like they were. Is it time coding? So it's actually only rendering it on the screen, and then the conversion is only like at the end you take and convert it. Yeah, yeah. So when so is it sort of like time code? And so what you actually have got is a program based on your original video. Um, I'm not sure. I understand. Uh, if I understand the question properly, that it's effectively when you're doing the editing on the screen, it's eh, it's taking the original fi file and eh, uncompressed as it is. Yeah, but you and know, um, what I want then, is whether you actually, it, it, not like an image where you're actually filling with the bitmap. It's I, actually just a time code in the video. Yeah. And so you're actually only rendering it so you can see it, but you're not actually I, into the file. Yeah, uh, so, so when... Of course you, uh, less than across the end, you say generate a new. Film yeah, yeah. So, the edits, I, and then that's the new film. But otherwise, it's on the existing theme. Yes. So, uh, okay. So, yeah, as you're editing it, all you're doing is, or all the program is doing is effectively time stamping the video videos that you've imported and taking chunks out of it then it's not till it's rendered at the end that it does all that work. Um, and that's when it ignores what file format it is and renders to the file format you've specified, even if it's the same file format. Does that? Yeah. Uh, well, uh, except I suppose I was going to ask what format it can read out and read in and put out because yeah. um, look. I mean, I guess what was interesting when you were saying about the pricing, was what you're paying for is those license codecs in the, in the, in the paid package. version. Yeah, yeah. So look, and I guess that comes back to it depends on on the program as to what file formats it renders to. But for the most part, it's sort of MPEG, um, DivX, um, the H.264, um, there's a few others, and I didn't write them down because it was going to be a whole page of different. Yeah, I mean that that sort of gives an idea. That one's out of K Kden Live that side. Um, so that's what that uh, that they're the sort of options for that one. Um, or like the other ones all have similar options, um, and it was just the Lightworks that has pretty much just YouTube, what it calls YouTube. Um, which I think so. I, I think it's an MPEG format that they use, um, and then the paid version gets back to opening up to a list similar to this uh, in in size. Cool. Excuse me. Yes. Can you have different formats on the timeline? Yes. So definitely, you can import different formats on the timeline. So editing a a, an MPEG with a DV format or what have you, yeah. Yes? Uh, yeah. Do, do each of these projects um, implement, the, do they transcode? Each of these, do, they, do they do transcode from one format to another? Um, not, not really. Um, so they uh, effectively, you could just, re yeah. They don't just do a transcode, but you could render it out to another program, uh, another so file. For... Um, they handbrake. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I, I guess the the answer is technically no. They don't just have a a transcoder op like oh, yeah, option. Right. Yeah, implemented in in anything that they're doing, their way around it would be to render the whole file into a format, into one of the formats they have, would be a 
uh, I guess, technically would be a workaround for it more than a actual just, yeah. 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 I've played with uh, a different thing. It's pretty cool, but yeah, I was wondering if each of those implemented, you know, their own transfer. Everyone doing the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I I think, and I'll, I'll go through yeah. something like handbrake at the end, but um, yeah, I I tend to think because make like developing these pro programs seems to be a lot of effort and work yeah. for them. They're just trying to not reinvent the wheel and go, okay, there's programs like Handbrake and uh, the others. Yeah, and instead of spending another three months building that in, they just go, oh, well, our workaround is just re-render it and deal with it. <laughs> um, if you're really keen on just doing that, go use Handbrake. <laughs> yeah, cool. Yes? Did you find anything that attracts? Did you have multiple audio? Oh yes, um, all, all the all four of these programs will allow. Um, I I don't think there's any limitations, but multiple tracks. So uh, I think all of them are unlimited amounts of tracks. So um, I can't remember. I now can't. I know three of them definitely are unlimited. And I now can't remember which one I couldn't find out an answer for, but I was able in in all like load up all four programs and dump a pro like a, a file into it and put I got up to about six or seven tracks in each of them and went unless you're doing professional video editing you probably don't need more than this. <laughs> um, when you say tracks, you're talking about both audio tracks as well as video tracks. Yes, both audio and video tracks, yeah. Um, Does Linux allow VST plugins to be? I'm not sure is the answer to that. Are um, the VST plugins things like compression and movement? Yeah, I. What I've actually heard. And I've tried to actually, there's a talk. Is the high end stuff that Channel 7 uses for all their editing? It's all Linux first. Oh, really? <laughs> that doesn't surprise me. Yeah. A lot of the stuff that I've heard a lot of the stuff they do, like uh, Pixel, what's that? Pixel, Pixel yeah. yeah. I've heard a lot of that stuff runs on Linux as well. It's all custom made. So, yeah, Pixel definitely runs on Linux. Um, Maya and Luke. The main program they use native tools. That yeah, I, I've heard a lot of that. That yeah, production houses are using in house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, all right, so I, I forgot that the supporting programs was the next screen. <laughs> All right, so um, I'll start with Handbrake then. That is a, definitely a recoder. Um, so it uh, up until a few years ago, you could uh, recode into about five or six different file formats. Then the developers went, everyone uses MP4. That's all you can do now. Um, no one really, well, I say no one. Someone probably knows why. I th I don't. I assume it was just a ease of use and or a licensing for the codex issue. I'd bet my money on licensing. Yeah. Um, someone came after and said, we want money. Yeah, and they then turned around and went, what's the one? What what can we do without money? <laughs> and oh, what do you mean, MP4? Oh, yeah. that was the big yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, there was, but uh, like they. And I think with MPEG four, as opposed to MPEG two and everything else. Yeah. MPEG four, they said, okay, we'll never charge for it. And they said, okay, we'll never charge. Right. That reinforces the idea of money was behind it, <laughs> and well, I. They had to give it away, so I think it was quite effective. Yeah. Um, we tried to get old business and. But yeah, so I think yeah, the handbrake guys just went great. Here's the one for file format. Um, there, I know in stuff that was online around the time, 
their response was, well, Apple and YouTube use MPEG-4. So if you use MPEG-4, everyone will, every device will read it. Whereas if you use another file format, device, some devices may not read it. So that was their justification for it. Um, but it seemed a bit vague at the time for their reason. But it is a good way of, uh, it, well, it is a good tool to use if you got a lot of, uh, I guess, large files. Um, so HD quality or higher um, video files and a couple of hours worth of it can be upwards of 10 or 20 gigs uh, files. If you've got an older machine and you want to do some editing, it's going to be very slow with very large files. So using something like Handbrake just to recode it into a sm smaller file format, you will lose some quality, but it may be the difference between um, being able to do the video editing without it freezing up every 30 seconds um, or not. Yeah. Um, OBS, uh, which stands for Open Broadcast System, I think, uh, is actually a screen and uh, computer program recorder for and uh, will work on any any platform, uh, any OS. It's uh, it's probably used a lot for people who want to do uh, live streaming um, and. Yeah, broadcasting. So gaming gamers use it a lot to do their sort of gaming videos. But I, I know it can be and is used a little bit for just doing training videos. So if you're trying to do a in-house training video for any program, um, you can you can definitely use this as something to do the screen capture because you can capture more than one uh, program or screen at at a time. It's quite good for you know, using your webcam and the program and then swapping into a web page or a secondary program and back again, um, all within the same recording. Um, it's actually quite a, a nice little tool to use for something like that. Um, and then can, be, can again, uh, you can, it has the ability to export into a uh, various different file formats and qualities so you can can export it in effectively the video into a fairly decent quality and then use that uh, uh, look gimp and is a I don't know a lot of people have heard of gimp now especially Linux users it's the Photoshop replacement that doesn't cost four thousand um, dollars blender 3d modeling like the 3D modeling side of Blender, effectively GIMP and Blender are very similar. One's 2D, one's 3D images. So uh, where they're sort of good for is if you want to put graphical graphical overlays onto stuff um, or uh, what was credits, opening credits, closing credits, things like that. Um, <coughs> the last one is Audacity, which is just an audio editor. All the video editors will edit audio, but something like a dedicated audio uh, editor like Audacity just has a whole lot more effects and a whole lot more it can do. Um, if you need those sort of things, they're useful. If you don't, you don't. Cool. Any other questions? Cool. All right. Some use cases, I've probably gone through most of these already. Um, social media, if you're blogging, if you're trying to do your corporate um, uh, ads effectively, you could use it for that. Uh, home videos, training videos, not much to say about that. I don't think it's fairly self-explanatory, sorry, fairly self-explanatory. Um, I guess the other one that I did mention was the um, streaming uh, that seems to be taking off as a thing. Um, 
Uh, I know Facebook now does the live, what, Facebook Live, I think they do, which is, yeah, take out your phone and wander around filming yourself live to Facebook if you're really keen. Um, I assume that you can then just do an, a video if, of yourself and then post it to Facebook as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, they will own it from there as, as they get it. Um, which I, I guess, yeah, any, especially with any social media, um, pretty much no matter who you're sending it to, they then have written into their clauses that they own it. Um, for the simple fact of if it happens to make a, a buttload of money, they want the money. If it doesn't make any money, they don't care. <laughs> but um, I, I guess I know an, another sort of streaming site, uh, Twitch TV, which a lot of gamers use to broadcast their ga live game playing onto the web. Uh, they, they do a lot of, we own the, the video and the money and the revenue from it and are quite good at holding all that off the, the streamers. So if they do, if a streamer does get 50 or 60,000 views, the company makes a lot of money out of it. The streamers tend to make possibly a few dollars, <laughs> possibly not. Um, I think Facebook's in a very similar situation. So which application do you use? What are you using? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the one I've used the most is the K, uh, KDM Live, and I'll go back to the, uh, if I do this. Uh, so I use, um, I, well, I have used KDM Live a lot. Oh, I say a lot, um, more more than the others, and um, it was just the one I found first, earliest that was became stable enough to use. Uh, the first couple of times I tried to use it, about 10 or 12 years ago, it would crash every 30 seconds. It was great when it was working and would auto-save everything and you'd go back in and do another 30 seconds or 40 seconds worth of stuff and it'd crash, you'd restart it, do another 30 or 40 seconds. After about an hour, or not even, about half an hour of that, I went, yeah, this is probably not the program for me. <laughs> um, about a year later, they fixed up the stability problems and it then became quite a fairly nice program to use. Um, the other, I opened shot, the original version was very limited in what it could do. You could cut, cut out sections and paste them together and that was about it. And I think it had two effects um, that it would do. Open shot two um, is very usable <laughs> um, and seems to be very similar. Um, I guess where I'd have a problem with uh, both Lightworks and Blender is I think they've both got more features but harder to use. Um, so if you've got the time to initially to go in and learn how to learn where all the features are and how to use them, I think yeah, I think with both well with all the programs now you could be putting out commercial quality television if you're then wanting to do a lot of visual effects with it as well then they'd probably struggle a bit with that um, possibly blender the would struggle the least amount with that and have the most functionality with that side of things but i don't need to do commercial quality television so i haven't tested it uh, so I, I use it personally just for, I do a, a lot of kayaking, so I've put, done kayaking videos I, I, for home use. <laughs> I'm not some, uh, I'm not trying to be some YouTube star on it <laughs> or anything like that. Um, just on that, yeah. commercial, it's only at FD2, so it's only at FD2. The editing is actually up to be for the sophisticated bit of television. Um, uh, well, yeah, so, look. You could send your video clips into 
to SBS and they will show it. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I possibly could. Um, and look, definitely, uh, even with um, KDN Live, I know it's got DVD authoring um, components uh, or plugins to it. So I know I was able to do something that actually authored a full, like a, a, I say, a proper DVD that you could then put into a DVD player with menus and play buttons and and put out at DVD quality. Um, I, all the other three could do DVD quality and better. And I, I believe, I know there were some DVD authoring open source programs. They've all gone out of my head as to what they were called. So, and I haven't seen them in a few years, so I don't know if they're still under development, active, actively being worked on or not. Well, I, I, I don't know if you want to send them to your, your grandkids. I don't know. You know well, no. they do it. Yeah, I don't know. Look at it. Yeah, look at it and go. My computer doesn't read it's that disc. Well, I, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, look, there's probably uh, six old people in retirement villages that still have a DVD player. So. Well, your grandmother, not your grandchild. Yeah. Say that, cause just just uh, two weeks ago, they it was on the news that uh, they made the, the last manufacturer of VCRs. Yeah, yeah, they're uh, discontinuing manufacturing, uh, stopping manufacturing. Yeah, yeah you cannot. I, I was it just the? T I think it was just the tapes. No, the actual video recorders. As well. Yeah, they. they it was the recorders. Yep. Yeah. Uh, cool. Shutting down production of the last yeah. VCR manufacturer. Yeah, when that's not when they run out of pneumatic uh, VCRs, then you'll hear an outcry. A whole lot of people who stop by the one. This won't put out to to um, VHS either, <laughs> unless you buy an old recorder. Should change the time of that. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, you can buy adapters for that. No, it's analog. Uh, it was a digital tape, but effectively. You had to put it out to analog with a USB adapter. Yeah. That'll be next month's talk. How to put this to v VHS. <laughs> so if everyone could buy up some... There are people who make money going the other way around, getting an old VHS cassette and convert it to DVD. Yeah. 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 Yes. I'm going to pretend I'm not old enough to remember. Yeah. No, I'm not. <laughs> it's all right, Sonny. Yeah. Political question. Many years ago, Chester and Nathan Reese became Premier of New South Wales and made this big announcement how he's going to spend X million dollars on software for schools. And it was mostly Microsoft software, so I wrote to his then uh, education minister asking why they weren't just putting it open source software. But with a lot of waffle, the answer came back that basically multimedia stuff wasn't like the world of open source. Yeah. Um, comment on that? Yeah. So um, the answer definitely a few years ago was yes to that it's not handled no no it wasn't handled uh, very well um what was the question? Uh, so i uh, say so the question was um just i, I guess years ago the uh, state government it was state government yes, Reece, yeah 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 Reece, um was announced a lot of money going into uh, it for and software for the schools um but it was all going to be proprietary effectively microsoft side of things so uh, why didn't they go open source and their response was well um, video is not really handled that well under under Linux so we're going with proprietary um, up until the last few years um, yeah that uh, I guess Linux distros shied away from all the codecs um, for the back to the money side of things, not not wanting to pay the huge license fees for them. 
um, the workaround for for that was uh, things uh, people like Ubuntu, uh, yeah, Canonical Ubuntu started doing doing stuff where they said, okay, well, we can't give it away in our product without being charged for it, but you're allowed to go and download the codex from their site for free. So check this button if you want to get us to download the all the codex for you. Um, so that started happening with a few other distros as well. So now you can do an install of of things like Ubuntu and I think Mint as well, and out of the box it's going to run and play videos. Um, so I think saying that you're not spending money on open source because it won't run videos is no longer a valid excuse, <laughs> um, but could have been justified five or six years ago. So probably the New South Wales government is still spending money on software it doesn't load to yeah, definitely. As well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My understanding is actually that there are various companies, Australian companies, that are trying to feed into, especially in the country, where uh, there are a lot of science students that just don't go to university because they're just not getting access to what we get in the city. And, and they're finding that the teachers don't really have a level of understanding of this software to be able to use it. Where with the Microsoft, there's sort of Microsoft training, this and that. And, and of course, the government gets a, a really great discount. And so if there's a real need for it, then that happens. But obviously, there's a gap, isn't there? Mm. So we probably need to volunteer more of our time, yeah, especially in the public school system, and they'd be really grateful for it to try and help the teachers. Yeah, look, I think they, uh, yeah, I, in a school by school basis and a university to university basis, I think Linux could be implemented, but there's definitely not, there's a, I think a reluctance from all state sized organizations to do the change because oh, it's all too hard. Um, I know there's a couple of European countries that have turned around and implemented open source strategies and said, okay, by the end of this year or 2018, every computer has to have Linux on it. And um, yeah, uh, yeah. If you want to volunteer, CSIRO, CSIRO run scientists and mathematicians in schools and they have a section for IT where people who know about IT volunteer and CSIRO line them up with school teachers who need help. So, and they you want to hear something really Microsoft. outrageous? Microsoft are actually doing it for free as well. But and at least... They're not just teaching yeah. Microsoft. They're, yeah. they're trying to get people interested in coding and, 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 and their coders are, are working with the kids and the kids go, I had this work in open code. They're still helping them. Yeah. So it's, lot, everyone's trying to give a bit of a hand. But. Yeah, look, at, and I guess at the moment it's all coming from what I believe, all coming from the bottom up and then getting lost somewhere on the way up. There's a gap. to And her business was doing open source library software. Yeah. So it's along the same sort of lines. Yeah, yeah. it's good. The ROI on it, on lobbying, it, it can't be beaten. If, if a politician decides something, you can, yeah. yeah. If, they, if, if they can invest more than you on lobbying, Sometimes it's a salary after you finish being no, 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 that never happens. Cool. All right, that's pretty much it for my talk. Oh, okay. Here we go. Um. There, there is another program for doing uh, stuff like um, uh, what you had GIF down there for. Yep. There's a program called uh, Cricker. It's actually 
I remember there used to be an uh, open office software called uh, K Office, the KD equivalent to LibreOffice, and they now call.